Hello and welcome! My name is Sekiro and this is my guide series for Hearts of Iron 4. Today we're gonna talk about air deployment, so let's get to it. Here I have started up a new game as Germany, but if you've ever played it before you might notice that something's already different. I've gone around and removed most of the planes that were already deployed, so I have some planes for to, to deploy to show you. But one of the airports still have planes. And how do you see that? Well, first of all, you can see the airports here. The airports um, show as these little planes. And if there's planes in them, well, then there's a circle around. When you mouse over them, you can also see the size of the airport. That's the tree. And you can see the capacity. That's the uh, 0 out of 600. And in Brandenburg, you can see that there's 204 out of 1200 planes. You can also see the different air wings that are currently there and their current orders, which are none at this point. So let's go in and check them out. When we press the airport, we also automatically go to the strategic air map mode, where you can see the different uh, strategic air zones. And now the, the, the airport I've chosen shows up in gold, whereas other airports that I select show up in gold like this if there's no planes. We can also see that in Brandenburg, again we can see we have 204 out of 1200 planes deployed here. You see that we have four air wings, one with 80 fighters, one with 80 tactical bombers, one with 40 tactical bombers and one with four transports. The, the fighter wing, uh, fighter squadron is also currently led by the ace pilot Eric Bubi Hartmann. There's a bunch of buttons here that I will explain now. Of course there's the deselect all, then you can select one and you can split the air wing in two. You can select two and you can merge them. And you can reorganize an air wing like this and add some more from, from reserves or you can maybe also have less and stuff like that. You can also say oh I want 20 of these, sorry. 20 of these in a new air wing, so I don't want to split it completely to, in two. I just want 20 of them to go in another wing. So on and so forth. And finally there's the create new air wing button, which we will return to. Down here you can see, as I said, there are currently 80, 80 planes. If I want to change that, this without creating a new wing, I can press on this button and we set, can set a new limit. Can I do it by pressing these buttons, saying, oh, I actually want 130 planes in this, or I actually only want 30 planes. And you can see down here, if I go below the current limit, it will say that some of the planes will be returned to reserves. If I go over the limit, it would say 80 out of 130, and then it would automatically fill in the, um, the squadron if it can. There are also these buttons which set the priority for reinforcement so I can choose oh this fighter squadron is much more important than all my other fighter squadrons so it needs more support or this is a, a a fighter squadron that I've just set up so I have them so I don't really want them reinforced it's much more important elsewhere. Finally of course there's the remove air wing which just remove them and of course you get a little um, box here so you can say oh do I really want to re remove them uh, which is quite impractical because once you've removed them, it takes some time for them to set up again. Finally, you can set up aces. Aces function as a kind of a leader and they increase the in effectiveness of a a um, air wing. So you can see here, it increases air attack by 10%, max air speed by 8%, agility by 15%, and then because it's a small squadron, it also increases to compensate for that. This is the only reason why you would maybe have several smaller squadrons than a, a very big one if you're wanting to assign them to the same job, mainly because you can then use more aces and you can um, get this tiny bonus. Um, you can also remove them by right clicking to unassign him and assigning him like this. You can only assign aces to the same kind of airplane, plane. so if you have a fighter ace, you can only fight uh, be in fighters. So, now that we have them in a airport, we can assign them to do stuff. 
Right now they're just standing by, as you can see. But let's say that this fighter squadron wanted to uh, protect the airspace over Eastern Germany. So we right click on this anywhere within the zone, like this. And now they are de deployed to that zone. And because I already have this zone selected, it automatically selected when I choose the airport, you can see that they are deployed over here. Here you can see some information about that air zone. You can see that we currently have two anti-air guns and the enemy has zero. We have zero active fighters, zero active support planes and zero active bombers and the same goes for our enemy. So, what kind of missions can they go for? Well, a fighter can either go for interception missions, which prioritizes killing bombers, or it could go for air superiority missions, which prioritize engaging fighters. You can also get an explanation of the different missions with these handy tooltips. You can even set them to go for both of these, in which case it will prioritize them equally. Um, although, in my experience, they have best effectiveness if they only go for one. Um, you can also see here that they don't have complete mission efficiency because they don't have range over the entire area. Um, you can improve this by maybe using several airports so that you have complete coverage over the whole whole area. Or here you can ch choose whether they are allowed to retreat. By default, for some reason, they are not allowed to retreat. But you can also say that they should prepare if they have 25% strength, 50% strength. Um, so that's the big di different options there. You can also choose whether you want them to fly day and night, which is default, only by day or only by night. The positives of flying during the day is that you can see more, but your enemies can also see you more. And the good things about night is that you can not be seen by your enemy, but you have a harder time selecting your targets. Especially for bombers, it would make sense to choose night flying, especially if you are flying without air superiority. You can also see up here the weather modifiers, if any. Down here you can see any uh, information about planes that are currently in this area. So, let's set them up for air superiority. We also want our tactic bomber set up. Let's say that we also want them to fly here in Eastern Germany. They have a few more options. You can set them for close air support. And in this case they will do the same work as a close air support. Uh, you can set them for strategic bombing and then they will bomb buildings, infrastructure and industry. Or you can set them for port strike, in which case they will try to kill any air enemy fleets that are situated in ports in this zone. So that will be these three ports. Let's say we want them to do close air separator in case we get into any fights. We also want them we want them both to repair. Finally, let's set up some more planes in this airport. So let's say we want some actual close air support. So we're gonna set them up here. Uh, okay, we we'll maybe we let's just have half of them. So we'll shift click and move 40 of them back. And when you do it like this, we want to make sure to go and also change the limit here so that it matches. Another way to do it is just to remove them completely and then go and do it again. And again, you can see control click to move 10. You can only have one type of airplane in a group, but you can have several different of the same type. So, for example, you can see we have. Uh, interwar bomber and tactical bombers, so we can have both of these in a group, but you can't have fighters and bombers. So we wanted 40 of these close air support. Let's set them up. Now they are, as you can see here, they are currently deploying. I think I set this wrongly by some for some reason. Let's just put that down to 40. And you can see they are currently deploying. It will take them about six days to deploy to the air zone. And you can see their expected arrival will be at 1700, 6th of January 1936. 
You also see that they also will only have about 98.84 coverage in this zone because of its size. But since this last patch, we can actually assign them to a job even though they are currently deploying. So let's just do that. We again right click on the zone, and you can see that they have pretty much the same options, except that they don't have strategic, uh, strategic bombing, they have naval strike instead. So if you wanna kill ships, you either need close air support or naval bombers. So again, we probably want these guys to do some clear air support, and let's let them recede. Let's say that we also want to have some planes out here in the Baltic Sea. Probably it would be best to use one of the airports that are a little bit closer. So let's say we want this, the Danzig airport. Uh, of course we can't use the Danzig airport because that's not ours, but we can use the post Prussian airport. It's just close button board down, so we have a little bit more screen to work with. And we want to add some naval bombers that we can use in the Baltic Sea. So let's create a new air wing. We'll just move all of our naval bombers there, and then we'll deploy them to the Baltic Sea. As you can see, they didn't show up here. That's because with this airport selected, uh, the standard showing is the Western Poland region. But I just clicked the Baltic Sea region, and suddenly they show up. And here you can see they can do either port strikes or naval strikes, because they are naval bombers. So let's set them to do some naval strikes. Again, we want them to retreat, and we don't really have anyone out here. So let's say that they are only allowed to fly during the night. Then we just we can see here on the tactical view that out here we have a naval strike mission going and down here in eastern Germany we have a air superiority mission going with 120 airplanes and a air superiority or a close air support and an air superiority mission going with 80%. We also mouse over to see the mission efficiency. And up here the mission efficiency is pretty bad because this is a huge region and the airport is all the way down here. So again, if you want to cover the whole region, you'll need more airports. So that's basically how you assign air forces to different airports. Then of course, maybe I want to move these guys because I would rather have them somewhere else. Uh, let's say that we want these tactical bombers that we're not using to go over here to the western front to be ready to, to bomb Amsterdam. So I say, okay, I want them to go to Westphalen. Just select them and right click on Westphalen and they move over there. You can see here in Brandenburg, we still have them. But they are transit in transit to Westfalen, and you can see that they will arrive in 2100 hours on today. If we go over to Westfalen, you can see that they are arriving from Bandenburg. And since I don't really want to waste my time waiting for that, I can assign them to the Benelux region right away. I'm gonna say, I want you to do some strategic bombing on Amps uh, in this region. I can't decide that I want it to do it in an stand, but it will attack the city, so. I want you to do it during the night only, and there will be no retreat. So that's how you set up your air force. A final thing that you need to know about is this air view, where you can see a, a, an overview of all your air forces. You can see up here, you can see the efficiency of all your missions. This is not the specific efficiency, but your general efficiency, and this efficiency can be improved by di different technology, events, and so on and so forth. You can also see which planes you have in reserve down here, or oh, actually it's just the amount of planes you have in all in all. And here you can see any deployed planes you have, along with any Aces they might have, the type, the airbase and the area they are currently working in, and you can even see which kind of mission they are flying. So there you have it, a guide to how you deploy and use Air Force in Hearts of Iron 4. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel please feel free to ask them in the comments. Hope to see you in my next guide video, but until then, have a good day!